Hey, hey, welcome to tonight's team call. I'm so excited to have you here with me. I'm making sure she's recording because she didn't say that. Um, anyways, hi, welcome. It is the first Monday of October and I'm so excited that you're here with me. I'm super pumped to be diving in and chatting today because tonight I am talking all about getting back to you, really going all in on yourself. I mean, this has kind of been a theme that I've been playing around with, right? But I haven't taken it seriously until I took me seriously. Give me some love, raise your hand, drop it in the chat if you have been feeling overwhelmed, in a funk, like you have a million things to do and you don't know where to start, right? Like, can I get an amen? This year has been hard. For me, it's been two years. It's actually been since the month before my husband had his knee surgery. And it was like, once that came about, I knew the responsibility I would have to take on. And it was one thing after another, after another, after another, and then the world shut down. And here we are in this whole messy place. And this whole time I've been openly talking about like, man, I'm struggling. Oh my gosh, this is hard. But still not showing up for myself. And I think it's because when we get into seasons of struggle, when we get into seasons of hard, it's so easy to go back too easy. It's so easy to put everyone else first. It's so easy to take that responsibility of showing up for us and just kind of putting it on the back burner. Like I can wait for a week or a day, but then that week or day turns into a month or two months. And then here you are, a year or 18 months later, and you're like, <laughs> what have I been doing, right? You realize that you've had your head in the sand and not for shame, because guess what? If you have not read Think Like a Monk, there is no good or bad, there just is. And a lot of the time, instead of just seeing where we're at and acknowledging it as facts, right? Instead, we say, oh, I've ate like shit and I gained 20 pounds. I'm a terrible human. I'm not good enough, right? Like we start this story in our head of why we're a failure or why we just are not determined to succeed, right? Instead of just being like, huh, life's been hard. Haven't been eating my best. Here's the facts. We create this story that we want to hang on to, right? Whether it's to punish ourselves, whether it's to give an excuse as to why, no matter what that is, we hold on to this story and we hold it as if it's truth. I'm here to tell you tonight, that is not your truth. A lot of you have been here for a long time, right? Some of you are new, but every day we are in control of two things, our attitude and our action. And even if we have a good attitude, that doesn't always mean our action is going to match that because, hey, baby, that's where I've been, right? Like, I am positive. I am powerful. I am taking care of me. But the action that I have been taking while I've been in this hard season of my life hasn't been with my whole heart. It hasn't been giving me my all. And that's really where things change, right? It gets kind of frustrating because we know what it takes. We know it takes moving our body. We know it takes eating right. We know it takes personal development. And sometimes we're doing those things and we still feel that funk. We still feel those hard seasons. Well, that's because sister, you're human. And this is real life. And you can't pretend that life isn't happening to you, for you, beside you, with you, whatever you want to do. Life is life and here we are, right? We can't control the outside circumstances, but we can control how we show up in this life that we're given. And maybe you're that person who's like me and you're like, oh, I've been saying this is hard and I know what I need to do, but I haven't gone 100% in for me, right? Maybe that's you. Maybe you feel me. Maybe you understand. This is the opportunity that you get to throw that out the window, right? Draw that line in the sand. Because if you're not going to fight for you, who is? 
we all know what it takes. It takes a decision, but we often hang on to those excuses, to those troubles, to the things that life is handing us because we want a reason to slow down, to not push, to rest, right? We want a reason or an excuse as to why we're not showing up. I get it. I love you enough to say you are the reason you're not showing up. And I say that because I had to have this talk with myself. I had to look myself in the mirror and be like, dude, you keep saying that food is the problem and you're not doing anything about it, right? Because it's summer and I want some ice cream and I love me some pizza, right? And neither of those are bad. It's not about restriction. I don't believe in that. I think there's a balance. However, when you feel, when you know your best is here, and you feel yourself sliding down, whether it's gradually or whether it's a quick drop, right? Either one, it doesn't matter. When you feel yourself not being your best, that's when it's time to self-reflect. A lot of people are really afraid of self-reflection. We're afraid to sit and ask, okay, here's my life right now. Here's where we're at. This is how I'm feeling. First, we don't want to address the feelings because maybe that's going to bring some issues to light, right? But I want to challenge you to be strong enough to face your truth. Once you are willing to stop sweeping it under the rug and instead just ask, hey, what is this that I'm feeling? Hey, where am I at in my life, right? That's when you can get real with who this is, who this is. Because at the end of the day, that who matters, right? Not who you're showing up for the rest of the world, but this right here, this person, right you, you right now. But if you don't know your truth, how are you going to be able to fix that or change that, right? So it's really asking yourself, where am I at right now? How am I feeling? What am I doing? On a, I do, I love to rate things. So on a scale of one to 10, one being not my best, 10 being fucking phenomenal, where am I rating? right? And if I am anywhere below a seven, I am asking myself, why? Why? And it's not to blame, not to shame, not to excuse, but just to know. Neither good nor bad just is. And so when you can ask yourself that right now, maybe if, let's right now, here in the chat, rate yourself. Where are you at right now? No shame, no excuses, just is, okay? You as a human, you in your life, your energy, your happiness, whatever you want to rate, that's really the thing that's important, right? It's what you want to rate. How are you feeling on a scale of one to 10, okay? And then if it's anything less than a seven, I want to know why you have, why you're leaning that way, right? What is the thing that's keeping you from being higher? For me, it was my mental and emotional wellness. For me, it was putting everyone, I mean everyone, before myself. Me, it was getting away from just being friends with people and trying to manage a business. For me, it was so many different things in the process, right? Loss of grandparents and uncles and COVID and all of this messiness in the middle. And I had to ask myself, like, okay. Here I am, I'm doing my workouts, I'm reading my personal development, I'm eating, like, why am I feeling like a three? I don't understand this. And the answer was all of those things. I had so many emotions that I was just feeling and I gave myself the grace to rest. But I realized I was just checking the boxes in doing the things that set my soul on fire in doing the things to show up for me. Yes. Did my workout. It was great. I was super distracted. I pushed pause 14 times. I was thinking about my million list of things to do, right? But I did my workout. I completed the program. Yes, I read my personal development, but it was after I woke up and gave to my inbox first as I was sitting here preoccupied by my million things to do instead of showing up and doing my morning routine without distraction, right? Yes, I was still eating good. Absolutely, even 80% of the time I was eating good. But I was still overindulging. I was still not eating enough, right? I wasn't showing up with the heart 
to love myself because I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was in a place of lovableness. I was a chicken with my head cut off, right? Running around everywhere. And I know as a wife, as a mom, as a woman, we think it's our job to fix everyone and everything around us. Can I get an amen, okay? Okay. But let me tell you, you are one person, one person. And for me, I found myself in that place. And I said, I can't drop anything, right? That's an excuse. Yes, you can. What I did tangibly was I wrote down my list of what I personally thought was my responsibilities. Those shoulds, you've got them. I know you do. I wrote out my list of shoulds, everything I should do, everything they need from me, everything that's on my to-do list. I wrote it all out. And I asked myself, one by one, one by one, is this blessing me, right? Is this blessing me? Whatever your list is, whether it's laundry or dishes, whether it's taking the kids to school, whether it's whatever is on your to-do list, ask yourself, is this blessing me? The second question, am I the only one who can do this? That, my friend, is the powerful question. Because again, we as moms, we love to be martyrs. We as women, we love to fix everyone. Are you the only person in the whole wide world who can do it, right? Because my children, they can fold that laundry. My four-year-old, he can match those damn socks. They may not match at the end of the day, but they're going to be done, all right? My kids want to help, but I have to let go of my control enough to let my eight-year-old sweep the floor, right? It's me putting myself out there to my husband and saying, hey, I need this done. And God forbid he doesn't do it the way I do it. God forbid that I have to stare at him like, are you a crazy person? That's not how we fold shirts, okay? Right? But guess what? If he's doing it, I don't have to worry about it. Gets done and it gets put away if you were just let go of control, right? That's where we're at. We are so fixated on the world that our environment being so out of control that we feel the need to control everything else except for the one thing we can control. And that's us, right? We want to control everything. Maybe then maybe we will feel good enough. Maybe then maybe we will have energy. Maybe then just maybe we might find the fire that we've been looking for. We might pull our heads out of our asses and feel freaking good. That's false. That is a lie you are telling yourself, my friend. The only way that you're going to feel better is if and when you decide to show up for you. Because You are the only one who can create your energy from within. You are the only one who can show up for you with heart, I might add. It's easy when we do have a million things happening to let go of ourselves. That, that's a self-love thing. When we're trying to prove our worth, when we don't feel worthy enough, when we don't feel loved, whatever those are, whatever your words are, those are obviously my words, but When we hear those lies come in, we go into protection mode. We go into prove it mode. We go into survival mode where we decide that those lies and those fears that we were holding on to are more true than what we know as fact. The fact is we can show up and fight for us, right? A lot of us have already done that before. We know where we're at. We have the plans, the programs, the tools, right? Like that's how we have a job is because we get to match people with that. But a lot of the times we're too afraid to go all in our, all in on ourselves because what is the sacrifice that's going to take? It's going to take you saying no to a whole lot of things, right? It's going to take you going all in zero excuses. I recently have been in this place, right? And I had to ask myself, why was it so easy my very first program. Why was it so easy 
the first 22 days that I was in a challenge group, because remember I did two rounds and I totally failed because I was trying to do it by myself. <laughs> That's where I found myself here, right? I was trying to save myself by myself while overwhelmed. Guess what? It still didn't work this time. <laughs> it wasn't until I decided to go all in on me. I am on, I'm wrapping up day 15 of 75 hard. Let me just preface this. I don't think you need to do 75 hard because, because it's, you don't have to do a second workout. However, I have been in a situation where I did 21 day fix and I went all in. And that's why I think going all in is the key. Not 75 hard, but 75 hard for me is that next hard challenge because I've gone all in on programs. And to me, it was important. I didn't want to follow a program right now because that's not going to fill my cup. But what I did want to do was go all in on me. Show up for my workouts with heart. Eat and follow the dang containers, right? Show up and do my morning routine uninterrupted, going all in, all my energy, all my focus on myself. Anyone else like, ugh, that's gross. Oh, I can't do that. That's so selfish. Really? Because uh, how's not going all in on you right now feeling? In order to create the change that we want to see, we have to do something different, right? And I don't know what your different looks like, but my guess is that you keep breaking promises to yourself right now. My guess is that you're measuring your success on outside things, on things you can't measure. You're measuring your worth on expectations you're putting on yourself or others might be putting on you. Hi, Harry. I think that it's very important that you ask yourself how you're showing up and what you're trying to prove to who. Because that's really going to be the answer, right? That's really going to be the thing that's going to make you gut check yourself. What are you trying to prove to who? And if you feel less than a seven, it might be time to pull your head out of the sand and decide to go all in on you with heart, not to check the boxes. You don't need to prove yourself to anyone except to you. Right now is when you get the opportunity to fight, to stand up, to lean in. And that's what I've done right? The last 15 days, a little bit more, I have shown up. I have leaned in on this team, on this community, in the bod group. I've been showing up, checking the boxes with my whole freaking heart because my life depends on it. I need to remind you, your life depends on this too. Your happiness, your joy, your internal emotions and feelings, internal emotions and feelings. Your body, your mind, your soul is just waiting for you to decide you're ready for different, waiting for you to decide you're worthy enough, waiting for you to go all in and give to you so that you can get past these limiting beliefs, so that you can get past the fears, so that you can quit trying to prove who you are and where you need to be and instead stand right here in this season that you're in, giving you your all. That's what's going to make you feel better. That's what's going to make you the happier mom, the more patient mom, the more loving wife. Because when you are maxed out and your list is so long and you're putting all these expectations on yourself and expectations on how other people around you should be reacting, that's when you're going to feel not enough. That's when you're going to be drained because you're showing up looking for outside validation. Fuck that shit. The validation needs to come from right here. Every single day, at the end of the day, you need to be looking right here after team call, look in the mirror and say, I gave myself everything that I had today with that smile on your face. So fucking proud of how you showed up. Because if at the end of the day, you look in the mirror and you say, well, showed up for everyone else. How are you going to feel? Right? You're not going to feel accomplished. You're not going to feel proud or like you love yourself. You're going to say, oh, well, I didn't get this done. Oh, I didn't do my workout. Oh, I ate too many bagels. Oh, I didn't 
do my job, right? Like whatever that is, you're going to end your day every single night saying you're not good enough. But what if instead tomorrow you wake up and you show up for you? What if instead tomorrow you give your whole heart to your workout? You give all your energy into what you're learning through your morning routine or your personal development. You drink your water as if it is the best margarita you've ever tasted in the whole wide world because you know those bottoms are endless, right? What if you just showed up like you meant it? At the end of the day, you're going to look in the mirror and you're going to feel what? I want you to put those words in the chat because it makes me feel proud. It makes me feel excited. It gives me back my fire. It makes me feel loved. I get a better connection with my kids. I get more time to do things in, that are fun for me, right? I feel like a badass. I feel powerful. I feel pumped up. And because I do good today, guess what happens tomorrow? Tomorrow, I'm like, if you did that, we're going to do this again, right? And tomorrow I'm going to show up better because I proved to myself yesterday that I can do this. Yeah, tomorrow may bring some new challenges. Tomorrow my kids may need punch and throw because they are really good at back talking, right? Listen, that's part of it. But because I was good today, because I drank my water, had my shake, thank goodness for those adaptogens, because I moved my body, I'm going to look in the mirror and be like, <laughs> damn girl that booty though right and then I'm gonna need that boost of confidence and then I'm gonna be like watch your mouth go play right I'm not gonna want to punch them in the throat when they're being mean to me because it's gonna roll off my back because I feel better about me isn't that so weird right like when we feel good about us we treat others better but it's true my life wasn't changed because I lost what was my first round? I lost nine pounds and 16 inches. That didn't change my life. What changed my life was the fact that I felt different inside. And I felt different inside because I was showing up for me outside. I was showing up for me every freaking day. I promised myself 21 days. That's it. 21 days. So while I'm doing 75 hard now, and I'm also looking for a bigger, better challenge to push myself because I know that's who I am and I know that's what I need. I'm encouraging you. What's a bigger challenge for you? What's the thing that you need to say yes to? Maybe you've never done 100% for 21 days. <laughs> Maybe it's time that you do that, right? Maybe you're not a runner, but you're like, mm, let's push myself outside that comfort zone. I'm going to do 30 day breakaway and I'm going to commit to completing a 5K, right? Maybe that's your heart. Maybe you've never lifted a weight in your life because you're so afraid of it and you've always been that cardio girl. Maybe now is when you pick up the weights, right? Maybe you've never followed the nutrition plan, right? You've skipped it, you don't measure it, whatever that is. Maybe it's now when you make that promise to yourself. Maybe you're that person who's never done 30 days every single day with a shake. If you haven't, sister, first, let me tell you, you need to do that. Your family needs you to do that. But maybe this is the time where you take yourself to that next challenge, right? What is that for you? What is your challenge that you have to face? What is the thing that will help you go all in on yourself? I don't know what that is. I know what it was for me. And I know that in the 15 days that I've done this, I feel different here. I know those of you who have spoken to me know that I feel different. You see me showing up differently. I'm giving to myself first every single day. And when I give to myself, I have more love to give. And that's super important for me. Because I truly believe that love is the answer to all my problems, right? My husband hurt my feelings. Okay, I'm going to love him through it. My kids are totally terrors. Okay, I'm going to love them through it, right? That can fix it. But guess what? I can't love my husband fully if I don't love me at all. I can't love my children with my whole heart if I can't even look in the mirror at myself. I can't love who I am. I have no love to give. And that's why that promise to yourself 
going in on going all in on you is going to be the thing that's going to get you through these next three months. It's going to be the thing that you need to pull your head out of this funk and feel good from the inside out. I want you to look in that mirror and be so damn proud of the person looking back at you. That's why I show up every single day because I was that mom who would wake up every single morning just wishing that the day didn't even start. I was that mom who struggled through every day yelling at my kids because they were so exhausting to me. My babies who just wanted loved, but I didn't love me. And through my confidence, through the promises that I made to myself and that I kept to myself, I changed. And because of that, I'm the mom who's fighting for more for my family, more time together. When five, six years ago, I wanted to run away from it all, right? And here I am ready to fight, to go all in so that I can have every minute with them. And that change, that doesn't happen because I kept breaking promises to myself. Sure, life's messy. Your journey is not straight. It is very up and down, right? You're going to have seasons of good. You're going to have seasons of hard. But because I decided to fight every day, and my philosophy in my coaching is that every day I show up for that one, that one mom who was like me, that one mom who was struggling. Sometimes I'm the mom I'm fighting for. And right now, that's where I'm at, is I'm here fighting for myself because I'm that mom. I found myself in that funky place again, and I am the one fighting for my happiness, my joy, and my life. And I want to encourage you, maybe you need to be the one you're fighting for today. That's what I have. If anybody has questions or comments, you're more than welcome to unmute. This is everything that I went through last week. <sighs> With more, you know, and I can tell you so much, everything that she's saying right now is true. Like, what I was just merely surviving and I was just showing up for my whole family instead of myself and expecting the love I wanted. <sighs> It made me angry. My anxiety came out as anger. My um, lack of love came out as anger. I was just so angry all the time. And that's not me. That's not the person that I am. So I had to ask myself really like through a lot of conversation, what is it that I need to do? What is it that I can do to love me more? And it's literally, literally what we teach every day. It's about getting back to ourselves inside of our body and inside of our mind. You cannot be yourself unless you're taking care of the body that you have and then the mind that you have because those two have to work together. They have to work in unison because you, you cannot expect to be the best version of you if you're not taking care of you. And it's hard. It's really hard. But the thing is, is that like you can overcome the cravings, you can overcome the temptations, you can overcome all those things because you're going to feel so much better. I went through a whole week. I didn't have any cheats. I didn't overeat on carbs. I hit my water goal. And Sunday night came and I planned it. I planned that like, hey, it's Sunday. I know we're going to do junk food. I can't do any junk food because hi, hello, miss gluten-free, dairy-free, everything free. So my junk food is very limited. And I'm sitting there with my gluten-free chicken strips <laughs> and my damn fries, you know, just living my best life. And I'm like, this doesn't even feel good. Not anymore. It doesn't feel, it doesn't taste good. It's not what I want. This isn't it. When we stop putting the worth in the things that we're putting in and start putting the worth in how we feel. <laughs> That, I think is where it changes for everything. It's so easy to be the martyr. It is so easy to try to strive for your work because it's just the thing that we've done for so long and what we've been taught. 
if we show up for others and we're the best and best moms and the best wives and the best friends then everything will be fine we have to be the best us and everything leader said is everything that I felt this week and everything that's come from me actually just showing up for me with my whole heart and not just myself and then full assing everything else you know oh god I might have drank some energized too fine I'm gonna stop I just want to thank you, Deidre, like for earlier today and then for that, because I am in the same boat. Like I am so overwhelmed with life. And like when I get overwhelmed, I try to add more control in, but it's not about myself. It's about I try to control everything else around me. And like I was literally crying because <laughs> of how uncomfortable I felt about letting go of control. And it's like, that's my like ding, ding, ding. You have to let go of control. Like you, normal people don't cry over that. <laughs> like you have an issue. So I think I'm going to flip it and do what you said about containers, which makes me super nervous because veggies are really hard for me right now being pregnant. Like that's the truth. And I just have to find a way to figure out how to do it. I just got two in with this shake and it was easy and tolerable. So that's an answer right there. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do it and start on a fucking Tuesday, I guess, because <laughs> that's tomorrow. Um, but thank you. Thank you so much. Because I felt like it was directly like you were talking in my soul today. I didn't realize it hit home so hard, but that's just it, right? We think that we're alone. We think that we're the only ones struggling when it's like, hi, all my best friends are here feeling the same way. <laughs> Why do we do this to ourselves? but it's so easy to lean out when instead we lean in, right? It's not about dropping your sweaty selfie in the bod group. It's about going in there and hyping someone else up because guess what? When I help someone else, I always feel better about me, but I also am waiting for someone to save me, to check on me, to feel me. And it's like, you can't have those expectations, right? Instead, we punish ourselves when it's like, no, just go love people and they're going to love you back. Go love yourself. And then you're going to feel it because you're not searching for it, right? You're ex exuding it. Is that the right word? I don't know. You're giving it away out loud. Okay. So I'm glad this call spoke to so many of you guys. I love you so dearly. I'm going to stop the recording. Maybe.